we'll be talking about the guidelines in test writing and construction. And for this time, it will be specifics already to the different types of examinations that you will be having. <laughs> So one topic here is your multiple choice test. Basically, the goal of this discussion is to develop your skill on how can you make an effective examination later on or effective assessment later on. So when we talk about multiple choice, these are the three key areas that you need to consider as a teacher. One, your mastery of the topic. Two, your writing skills. And then third, the time element. Okay? So look at that mastery. For example, na, I'm uh, I major in science, so don't expect me to make go good assessment in other topics or other subjects because my mastery is in science. Okay? But if you will give me time to learn other subjects, I might be able to do that. But one thing here that we are reminding you of is that do not just make examinations for the purpose of making one by opening the textbook and then make items randomly. Okay? I have seen teachers who would do that, who would just open the textbook and then say, oh, sige, ito yung exam natin kasi nandiyan naman sa textbook. Hindi po ganon. Dapat when you create the examination, you should have the mastery of the subject matter itself. Then, you need to have your writing skills. Okay? Now, when we talk about your writing skills, you don't need literary writing skills for you to create an effective multiple choice examination. Kaya hindi po natin kailangan ng literary writing skills para makapag-create ng multiple choice item exams. Pero kailangan po natin, we need skills especially on spelling, grammar, subject-verb agreement. Those are the important skills that you need to have. Okay? Now try to think no, or try to remember, if may mga items kayong namimit na wrong grammar siya, the tendency is that you will be confused. Pag may mga items tayong namimit na wrong spelling siya, the tendency is that you as a learner will also be confused as to how to approach these questions. Okay? So, dapat importante, mastery, writing skills, at saka time. Of all the examinations that we are making, the most time-consuming is the multiple choice. And the most time-consuming class is your multiple choice. Bakit? Okay? You're making questions, you're making items there. You need to see or apply critical thinking among your students. You need to think hard of the items that you are giving to your students. And that's why it also entails time. Now, um, when we will be discussing multiple choice, oftentimes we say that your multiple choice has three parts. No? So the three parts is your STEM. So the STEM is the question itself. Uh, yung STEM po natin is yung question po mismo. Pagkatapos, you have your distractors and then you have your correct answer. So your correct answer, obviously, is the answer that your student would want to pick. And then your distractors class are the other options or choices, which are actually wrong. Okay? So that's uh, that's the anatomy, we say. That's the anatomy or parts of your multiple choice questions. So try to remember the stem, you have the distractors, and then the correct answer for that. Now, let's talk about the the content first of your examinations and what are the rules that you need to remember. So you need to write items that reflect only one specific content and cognitive processing skills. Okay? Kapag gumagawa po tayo ng item, let's make sure that we are only making that item for a specific topic or content. Hindi po po pwede that we are having complex items or complex sentences when we are asking questions. Okay? Now, second reminder is that you do not lift and use statements from the textbook or other learning materials as a test question. Ano pong ibig sabihin yan? Ano? Di ba may reference text tayo? And then, for example, gumagawa kami ng handouts. Or for example, gumagawa kami ng learning guide. As a teacher, it is not wise for us to pick the item word for word from the textbook, word for word from the material that I have given you. Why? As a teacher, our goal is to elicit thinking among our students. Take note, pag titignan po natin yung levels of knowledge na gusto natin, we do not stop by remembering. Diba? Remembering is even on the lowest. Tandaan nyo, meron pang understanding, meron pang analysis, meron pang creation and even evaluation of the knowledge. So if we would want our students to do that, hindi po pwede na we would copy-paste it from the textbook. Okay? Now, for example, now for example, look at this sentence. I will say, do not blank 
and use statements from the textbook. Okay? Hindi po magandang uri ng exam niya. Okay? Are you getting what I mean? Diba? Merong mga identification minsan na nakalagay. Keep the blank simple and understandable. Napakaraming bagay po yung pwede kong i-keep simple and understandable maliban sa vocabulary. Okay? I am making the student memorize my notes letter per letter. Pagkatapos next time, next year, kapag they will encounter the same concept, they could not understand. Okay? So, hindi po po pwedeng ganon. Other than that, in the setting of online classes or flexible learning, if your items are directly lifted from the reference text, textbook, or from the internet articles, madali po siyang i-find and search. It can be easily find and searched by your students. Okay? Halimbawa, they will just copy this question, paste it in Google, and then Google will tell them, okay, here's the answer because it's too obvious. Your teacher just copied it from this part of the world. Okay? So, tandaan po natin yan. We are not supposed to copy. We are not supposed to use statements from the textbook or other learning materials as test questions. Pangalawa, or our secondary to that, okay? Plus, minsan yung mga textbook natin ginagamit, may, 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 ano yan, may, may accompanying workbook. Okay? Plus, the workbook is actually intended to be a guide for the activity. Kaya nga po tinawag po siyang workbook kasi nga work, magtatrabaho kayo with the student. Okay? You will work with the student in the, clini ah, in, the, in the classroom, in the laboratory, or in the clinical setting kapag clinical subjects siya. Okay? Now, class, do not copy items from the workbook. Okay? Kapag nagtuturo kayo halimbawa ng science at saka anatomy, do not copy all the items there. You are wasting your time. You are not doing good assessment. Okay? In the same way, you are not supposed to copy examinations from your quizzes. Halimbawa, quiz mo to, no? Di ba may quiz? Quiz 1, quiz 2, quiz 3. Tapos, first grading period. Don't make it a point that your first grading period is just the combination of your quiz 1, quiz 2, and quiz 3. Okay? Sinasayang mo lang yung oras mo. Sinasayang mo lang yung papel na ginagamit mo. Okay? So, make it a point that if you will be deriving questions from your quizzes, make sure that you have tweaked the item. Kung baga may pinalitan kang concept, may pinalitan kang part ng question para iba naman yung isasagot ng student mo. Para they will understand that they will just not need to memorize the answers, but they also need to remember the rationale behind the quizzes that you are giving them. Okay? Then the third point here is to keep the vocabulary simple and understandable. Take note, hindi ka po magaling na teacher kapag yung katabi mo po, yung co-teacher mo, could not also understand the question that you are talking about. Okay? One thing actually, one of the best practices in education that we can implement, especially if you are working on later on, is ask your companion to proofread. Ask your companion to proofread the examination that you are giving. And when you are asking them to proofread, do not give them the answer key yet. Uh, do not give them the answer key yet. You can actually do that in your requirement here. No? You can ask your colleague to, you can ask your classmate to proofread. And then if there are things that your classmates could not understand, edit that question. Kasi kapag hindi nga naiintindihan ng classmate mo, na college na, how much more your students, how much more your students later on, which are in the elementary and the high school level. Okay? That's one thing that we need to improve. No? That's one thing that we need to improve. Many students would complain that their teacher's exam is ununderstandable. Ha? Marami pong student na nagko-complain na yung exams po nila hindi naiintindihan. That's why they are failing in this subject. Okay? Now, be mindful of that. Be mindful of that. If you are having problems on sentence construction, start as early as now. Gumawa ka ng mga short sentences. Pagkatapos, pakita mo sa kaklase mo, be open for the suggestions so that you can improve it. It will be difficult on your part later on kung kayo'y professional na tapos you don't know how to make questions for your examinations. Okay? That's one thing that you need to remember. Then, if you would look at it, edit and proofread the items. Edit and proofread the items. Now, for the STEM, you need to write the directions in the STEM in a clear and understandable manner. 
Okay? So, dapat clear ka. No? Dapat yung instructions mo palang on top, you should be clear. If you would want your students to write in capital letters, sanayin mo sila na capital letters. Tapos, dapat nakalagay yan sa instruction mo. If you don't want your students to be making erasures, it should be clear in your instructions that erasures are not supposed to be made. Okay? Now, on the stem of the question, if you would want the student to identify what is the best answer, you write, what is the best approach for this scenario? Or you write, what is the best answer for this question? Dapat clear ka. You need to write the items that are consistent in form and structure. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng second na to? If your questions are all sentences, if your items, I mean, are all sentences, dapat yung lahat ng item for that exam sentences na lang. Okay? For example, I will say, this is the part of the plant that is in charge of photosynthesis. Period. A, is it the chlorophyll? B, is it the roots? C, is it the stem? Then yung next question mo dapat in sentence form then. It is considered to be the male reproductive part of the flower. A, B, C, D. Okay? Hindi po maganda tingnan in standard that your number one is a question, number two is a sentence, number three sentence, number four question mark. Okay? So dapat, dapat, it should be in the same form whether it will be in descriptive or declarative. No? Question form, whether it will be question form, interrogative, or descriptive or declarative form. Then, word the stem positively and avoid double negatives. Okay? Yung bang mga tanong, which of the following is not ugly? Okay? Pwede ko namang sabihin na which of the following is beautiful rather than saying that which of the following is not ugly. Or for example, the following are safe practices in injection. Ah, the following are unsafe practices in injection. Exempt. Bakit may unsafe tapos exempt? Pwede ko naman siyang i-rephrase that which of the following is the safe practice for injection? Are you getting my point? Ha? Hindi po natin dapat kinukonfuse yung student tapos sabihin mo na, sige nga, tignan ko nga kung nagbabasa sila kapag nakikita nila yung not at saka exempt. Okay? Hindi po ganon. And if you would look at the guideline, if a negative word class is necessary, it should be underlined or capitalized for emphasis. Dapat underlined siya and capitalized for emphasis. Okay? Ganyan po yan ka-importante. That's how important it is. Okay? So that's why if you can notice in the examinations that we are creating, when we have exact, we use uh, it in all caps. Okay? All caps at saka naka-bold yan usually. Now, Another pala dito is the common ones that is being used is all but one. So all but one. Your all but one also stands for exam in case that you will encounter that item later on. All but one also stands for exam. Ha? Kasi confusing din yung basahin. Then refrain from making the stem too wordy or contain too much information unless the problem or question requires these facts to be presented to solve the problem. Okay? If you can notice in the examinations, if may mahabang questions po, usually it would only comprise at around 10% of the examination. Because if you will have all long items for that exam, the tendency is that your students will be spending a lot of time to read those questions. Okay? But you can only do that if the details that you have indicated there are actually needed to solve the problem. Okay? Ano pong ibig sabihin natin dyan? No? Halimbawa, if you're having a um, scientific method, okay, tapos gusto mong ipakita sa estudyante na mag-gather muna sila ng data before they will be able to um before they will be able to do the experiment. So if that's the case, guys, no? if that's the case, you can give them a lengthy stem of the question. Basta may katuturan siya. Basta the data is useful, the details there that you have indicated will be useful for the student to answer the question. Okay? Again, do not make your STEM the distractor. Ha? Do not make your STEM the distractor. Then options. Doon tayo sa options, guys. For the options, this, there should be only a total of three to five. 
Okay, there should be only a total of three to five options per item, with one being the correct answer or the best alternative. So, class, hindi po wise na may seven choices ka, hindi po wise na may eight choices ka, because your students will just have headache on answering your exams. Okay, it will not be critical thinking that will be working, but already chances. Okay, so three to five options lang. Kung kaya kadalasan nakikita natin A, B, C, D. Okay, in the board exam, A, B, C, D, E. No? Usually, there is an E in the board exam doon sa answer sheet, pero wala naman pong E sa choices. So, yung ginagamit mo pa rin sagot is A, B, C, D. The purpose of that is that for the learner to be able to focus on the four questions or the four options, I mean, and then they will be able to apply critical thinking in approaching the four choices. Okay? Now, Write the options that are parallel or similar in form and length to avoid giving clues about the correct answer. For example, the question is, what is the capital of the Philippines? Kapag yung question po natin is, what is the capital of the Philippines? We need also to present choices which are all places. So, limbawa, pwede kong sabihin, letter A, sabihin ko Bali. Letter B, give me a place nga. Let's say, for example, Washington. Tapos, letter C, Manila. Okay? Hindi po wise, for example, that I will add the choice 1985. Okay? Because my question is, what is the capital of the Philippines? And when I'm asking the question, what is the capital? I am expecting that the answer will be places. Di ba? So, in-expect ko na places yung answer. So, class, hindi po pwede na maglalagay ako dyan 1985. Tapos sabihin ko, okay lang, bonus lang yan sa kanila para makita nila na date naman yan. Hindi naman nila yan isasagot. Okay? That's what we meant by parallel or similar in form. Okay? That's what we meant by parallel or similar in form. Or for example, I would be asking, which of the following is the best? Is the best practice on medication administration? On medication administration. Okay? Sabihin ko, una, check the label. Pangalawa, identify the patient. Pangatlo, administer slowly. Tapos, pangapat, check doctor's order. Now, if you would look at the choices, guys, kung nakikita niyo sa choices, they are, all, they are of the same form they are also of almost the same length to avoid giving about the correct to avoid giving clues about the correct answer ay ano pong ibig sabihin na natin ng the same form plus kapag yung aking mga choices are sentences they are on sentences if you would look at it i start with a verb all of my choices are starting with a verb check identify administer check pagkatapos it is followed by the noun Okay? So, ito nga, ito nga, no? administer, sige, administer the drug slowly. Now, what have you noticed? No? In fact, sa kaming nagre-review for the board examinations, I do review no, for the nursing board examinations. One of the clue that we give our students is, kapag wala ka nang maisasagot, you find the longest choice or the longest option. That's usually the correct answer. Have you heard of that? Have you heard of that? No? Na kapag wala ka na daw ibang choice, okay, kapag wala ka na daw maisasagot, yung pinakamahaba lang, yung piliin mo, kadalasan yan yung sagot. Bakit po ganun yung tendency ng mga nagka-create ng exams? Okay? Why class? The one creating the exam kasi would have the tendency to give you the clue that this is the correct answer. And that correct answer could be justified kapag masyado siyang mahaba. Okay? So that's why we are avoiding it because kumbaga parang parang nagsuspoon feed ka. Parang binibigay mo na lang sa estudyante yung sagot. Halimbawa no, if I will say letter B, identify the patient using the ID bracelet to ensure patient safety. Okay? Oh. Tignan yung question. Kahit hindi kayo familiar ng mga concepts namin sa nursing, kahit hindi kayo familiar ng concepts sa medical field, parang mapapaisip ka. Okay, letter B, parang may patient safety pa. Siguro yun na siguro yung sagot. Okay? 
So when we are writing options, the options should be parallel. It should be similar in form and length to avoid giving clues. Nakita ko sa mga questions niyo, for example, na nasend no. What are what are what is a uh, which of the following is a primary primary color? Halimbawa daw. So isa sa choices sinabing red, tapos sinabing green, purple. Tamang ganon. Okay? Pero hindi pwedeng sabihin na which of the following is a primary color tapos nakalagay red, yung isa yellow green, yung isa pinkish red. Hindi po po pwede kasi obvious naman sa mga estudyante na kapag combination ng colors, hindi na siya primary color. Okay? So there are things like that no that you need to remember when you are making the multiple choice exam. Kung baga, kung ako yung gumagawa ng exam, yung iniisip ko is, paano hindi masyadong obvious na ito yung sagot? Okay? At saka paano naman na malalaman din nila na ito yung sagot? So dapat balansihin mo siya. Then you place the options in logical order. Halimbawa, no, if you have five options there, it's best for you to place them in alphabetical order. Para alam ng student na ay okay. Okay, parang may organization ba siya kung saan niya hahanapin yung sagot. And then if you can't avoid, halimbawa yung question mo is, what is the, anong tawag natin sa English niyan? What is the main idea? Yung mga English major dito, di pa may main idea of the of the paragraph, may mga ganon. So, di ba, what's the main idea of the paragraph? Di ba, class, the main idea is usually a sentence that is found, it could be on the first part of the paragraph, it could be in the middle, or it could be in the last part. So, kadalasan, ikakopy mo talaga yan from the paragraph. So, try to arrange, try to arrange your choices from the shortest to the longest. Kaya kung nakikita nyo kahit sa exam, di ba, kapag mahaba yung sagot class, usually sa letter D yan nakikita. Okay, pag malaba yung choice, sa letter D po yan nakalagay as an option. Then, you place correct response randomly to avoid a discernible pattern of correct answers. Okay? Now, ito ha, sometimes I'm also guilty of this, no? I don't know. But I, uh, sometimes I have examinations. I have kasi the tendency na huwag natin ilagay sa A yung answer kasi napakabilis. Makikita ka agad na A na yung answer. Pagkatapos sinasabi ko ding B masyado pang early, sige, sa C ko ilalagay yung answer. Huwag na sa D masyado ng malayo. So I myself, no, I, I became aware that I have the tendency to place the answer at letter C. Okay? I have the tendency to place the answer at letter C. So what am I doing? By the time that I will have the answer key being prepared, I count the number of items for each of the letters. Okay, I count the number of items in which the answer is this letter. Class, as a teacher, dapat po evenly distributed siya sa A, B, C, and D. Hindi po po pwede na majority ng mga sagot natin letter C kasi favorite letter natin yung letter C or pangalan ng crush natin nagsisimula sa letter A. So letter A na lang lahat ng sagot sa examination. Hindi po pwedeng ganon. Hindi din po pwede na Number 1A, number 2B, 3C, 4D. Tapos number 5A, B, C, D. You know what? It actually crossed my mind because I said para mas madaling i-check, di ba? At least memorize na ka. A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C. But if that will be the case, your students will just be finding out the pattern okay, and not your examination. They will not be answering your examination. They will just answer to the pattern. Okay? So kindly take note of that. Okay, so avoid discernible pattern of correct answers. Now, use none of the above carefully and only when there is one correct answer, such as in spelling or math items. Okay? Avoid all of the above as an option, especially if it is intended to be the correct answer. Now, ano pong ibig sabihin? When we are making our exams, hindi po po pwede na lahat ng sagot na lang, none of the above, at saka all of the above. Okay? Obvious kasi. Tingnan nyo yung mga exams. No? Kapag all of the above plus yung nakalagay, kadalasan yan yung sagot. Okay? Kadalasan, that's the answer. Even in board exam taking strategy, I would tell my students that if you don't know the topic and then you are asked the question with all of the above, Okay, ipasa Diyos mo lang at itsagot mo na lang yung all of the above. Kadalasan kasi yan talaga yung answer. Okay? So since we are the ones, as teachers, we are the ones making the examinations, we refrain from using the all of the above. Okay? We refrain from using the all of the above and none of the above. 
Pero pag kailangan mo talaga siyang gamitin, just make sure no, na wala talaga yung sagot dyan for the none of the above. And then make sure that for all of the above, all of the items or options does really apply. Okay? Then you make all options realistic and reasonable. Okay? Make it realistic and reasonable. That's why kung nakikita nyo, when I'm making your examinations in assessment in learning, I would make situations of a student having a concern. Tapos anong gagawin mo bilang teacher? And then if you can notice, my options there are actually what the teachers are doing. But I'm making you select what's the best option that are available. Because the purpose there class is that you would put yourself no, and try to imagine. Halimbawa, no, ako si Melissa. Sasabihin ni Melissa, okay, pag ako yung teacher, ano nga ba yung gagawin ko kapag ito yung situation? When Melissa thinks like that, I am already able to trigger Melissa to apply critical thinking. Okay? Which is actually the goal of your multiple choice examinations, especially on higher order thinking skills. Okay? Um, with all due respect to the uh, author of this one, no? I got this from SlideShare presentation by Stevens. Uh, look at this. Just try to read. Try to read. I took a class on a topic I knew nothing about, clicked through the materials, and took the test without reading anything. I passed. What does that suggest? I'm a genius. The assessment was too easy. The course was too easy. The course didn't even need to be written. Or E, it's B, C, and D. Class, um, this example is actually double-edged. Double Bakit ko sinabing double-edged? It hits two important points. One class, you must not make your assessment very easy. Okay? Very easy assessment. Halimbawa, if your student would say this, um, I took the test without reading anything. Hindi siya nagbasa. Hindi siya nag-aral. And then your student passed. As a teacher, will you be happy about that? Your student did not read anything, pero nakapasa siya. Are you happy about that? Will you be happy about that? Okay? Class, that's actually an education that your assessment is very easy. Kung baga, si ma'am, si sir, nag-prepare ng giveaway exam na kahit daw hindi mo pa pag-aralan, napapasa mo naman. That is not how your assessment should be. Okay? And then second class, if you would look at this, in test making, test construction, iba-iba po yung structure ng kanyang mga ano, ng kanyang mga choices. Okay? This one class, I am a genius. It started with I. Kumbaga, first person. B, the assessment was too easy. Class, this is already second person or third person. Kumbaga, hindi consistent the way that the sentences are stated. Okay? And then it's it's as if that we're given the clue that the answer is B, C, and D. Okay? And then this one is very long compared to other choices. So you need to be careful about that. Okay? Now, let's look at this one. I'll try to read first on your screen, and then let's try to react. Okay. Can you get the point? Ha class, ano ano po yung what can be improved in this question? Could I get your opinion on that? What can be improved on this question? Or what can you notice na mali sa pag-construct ng mga sentences na to? Anybody? Sige na. Yes, Melissa. Mm -hmm. That's one. What else? Sige, no? Class, no? Look at the consistency. Imagine, some of the choices are rarely, sometimes, occasionally. Tapos may pumasok na isang mahabang sentence. Diba? Right there and then, alam mo, what happened? Bakit ganun yung kahaba? Siguro yan na yung sagot. Okay? So there's a problem in the consistency of how the items are created. Okay? Now, let's look at this example. Let's look at this example. Hmm? 
from that, you are given the clue na, ah, okay, all of the above na nga yung isasagot natin. Okay? So, for this type of question class, again, I would like to repeat ha, all of the above and none of the above, baka ma-misinterpret nyo. Hindi ko siya class sinasabi na completely bawal siya. Pero class, don't use it. Don't use it na as if yan na lang talaga yung entire exam mo. Okay? I have seen examinations kasi wherein majority of the items are all of the above, none of the above. That's not how so, that's not how it's supposed to be. Um, I've heard an educator once that the that the allowable number of items now, okay, that the allowable number of items now is at around um around five to ten items in a one hundred item exam. Five to ten items of none of the above or all of the above in a one hundred item examination. Okay, sige now. We can confuse learners when we fail to actually complete the sentence we started in the question. Inconsistent grammar in the option. Sometimes we veer into another idea entirely than wombats. So as you can notice, the choices here are also inconsistent. And then if you would look at this class now, kapag yung sentence mo, kapag yung sentence mo is actually, um, if you would want a question to complete a sentence, okay, for example, the process of converting the light energy the light energy to starch or food is referred to as black pag yan po yung sentence natin or pag yan po yung question natin dapat all of my options should be able should be able to complete no to complete the sentence so a physical change B, photosynthesis, salimbawa. Pagkatapos, uh, C, let's say, for example, soil erosion. And then B, let's say, light transfer. So, plus, if you would look at how they are created, okay, if you would look at how the choices are created, naka-small naka -small po sila, small letters po lahat. Bakit po siya small letters? Kasi it will complete the sentence. And then bakit po siya may dot? Kasi nga it will complete the sentence also. Okay? Now if you would look at this, no? we can confuse learners when we fail to actually complete, when we inconsistent grammar in the option, it does not fit. It does not fit. No? So obvious number two could not be the answer. Kasi nga, kasi nga hindi siya nag-fit dun sa sentence. Eh. Parang mali siya pakinggan sa sentence. So dapat, we need to make sure again, as what Melissa is, uh, informed earlier, na dapat po yung form po ng sentence natin, dapat yung form po ng options natin is similar. Okay? That way, we are able to ensure that our uh, learners will be able to choose wisely. Okay? So what are the things now? What are the problematic things that are usually happening in the multiple choice examinations? And uh, I pick this up actually from my students. No? I picked this up from my students before. And this is what they shared to me. Okay? What are the usual problems now that they encounter? One is the unclear sentences. Ibig sabihin class, mga sentences na hindi naiintindihan. Mga questions that could not be understood. Next, select all that apply. Class, pag sinabi kong select all that apply, Halimbawa, class, there are four choices. Tapos yung instruction mo is select all that apply. Ibig sabihin, if you have two, two answers there, you need to check the two. If there are three answers there, you need to choose the three answers. Kasi nga, select all that apply. So class, the students would usually say that there is difficulty on those items because they are difficult to be checked. Kaya mahirap pong i-check yung mga items na select all that apply. And other than that, you are confusing your students kung ilang items po or kung ilang options yung dapat nilang iselect. Okay? There are teachers kasi, for example, that would say, select all that apply. Tapos isa lang yung sagot. Tapos meron din namang nagsasabi, select all that apply. Tapos A, B, C, and D daw yung sagot. Okay? So, it's confusion. Okay? It's confusion. Okay? So, um, but then, no? Uh, alimbawa, uh, in us, in our case, in the medical field, in, especially in nursing, in our board examinations, especially in the U.S., what we refer to as NCLEX, meron po kaming select all that apply questions. So alimbawa, class, bibigyan kami ng anim na option. Out of the six options, kapag apat lang yung correct, dapat apat lang talaga yung i-check ko. 
kapag I will be checking more than four, right away that entire item will be zero. If I will check only three out of four correct answers, zero din po ako. Okay, that's why class it's a it's sometimes questioned whether it's actually effective or not. No? So please be careful or be mindful of that if you're using it. Then also among the concerns are very long questions. So mahabang questions daw. Class, tingnan natin na yung budget natin dapat is one minute per question. Okay, dapat po yung budget natin is one minute per question. If kayo po yung teacher na gumagawa ng exam, try to time yourself on how will you answer the exam and then multiply it by 1.5. Okay, multiply it by 1.5 for you to determine how long are your students expected to answer the examination. Okay? So, alimbawa, I will create a 100-item exam. Tapos, sasagutan ko ulit yung 100-item exam. Pagkatapos, class, kapag nasagutan ko siya in 45 minutes, I will multiply it to 1.5 and then there I will know that my students will answer it in about more than one hour. Okay, so 70 minutes, no? 67.5. Okay, so that means that if you are the teacher, ikaw yung gumawa ng exam, expect mo na medyo mabilis ka talagang sasagot ng exam mo. Kasi nga, exam mo yan. Okay? But then you need to give your students time. So that's 1.5 times 1.5 in their case. Okay? Then wrong grammar is also a persistent concern among the students. So please be careful with your grammar. Ha? Dapat po yung grammar natin. As what I mentioned, dapat ipa-counter check po natin sa kasamahan natin. Okay. Do you have any questions so far?